commitment. Marlon was one of the first, I think the third commitment in the Georgia class for that 2021 class. So let's patch him in right now via the streamlined phone uh, phone line. How are we doing today, Marlon? Great, great. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Can't complain. I mean, you, you probably could complain at a time like this, but it doesn't serve any purpose to complain, right? You just kind of kind of adapt as the time oh, goes. So. Exactly. Yeah, man, you just got to adapt and, and react to, to the environment that's that's around all of us. We're all in this together. I mean, no, no, no one person. I mean, some people are struggling more than others, but we've all had our lives, you know, drastically affected by what's going on. And, and it looks like we're, you know, they, at least there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So let's get right into it, man. So if you had the top 10 commitments, right, or the, the top 10 list. It was actually more of a almost like a top 11. Um, but, you know, just a day later, you, you commit to the University of Georgia. So. What what was the, the the decision process for that to be so uh you know accelerated uh from making a list to making a commitment the next day? All right, so um so when Georgia's basketball team was playing Florida, mm. um, I had already had the poster that night, and so when I went to the basketball game, I talked to Coach Scott and Coach Lennon, and, um some of the other um recruit recruits there, and so I was just talking to them and stuff, and like the way they like the way over the past month that I've been. I'm dealing with them. They just been showing tremendous love to me and, and like showing how they really want me there and where I could fit in it to get a great start off uh, to keep going early in my own um, career, my football career. And so with that being said, like I just had a little fun with it. I just dropped the top 10, even though I already had the poster. So I dropped the top 10. And then by the next day, um, they already had my commitment poster. So I went on ahead and posted it. So I, I just, you know, had a little fun with it. Yeah, I rolled out of bed. I think it was like it was early in the morning, Marlon. I mean, especially for oh yeah, you know, yeah, high it was school, right, it was like, right yeah. after um, football workouts. Yeah, I, I think it was. I think it was like eight, and I committed to, uh, right after. Yeah, I was about to say it was. It was before even eight o'clock in the morning. So you know, I'm I'm you know showering, brushing my teeth, and I get a text message from our lead recruiting analyst, Blaine Gilmer, and it's like, "Hey, bro, Marlon Dean just committed," and I'm like, "Oh, all right, let's let's write the story." So kind of took us all by surprise, even though we knew you were on the radar. Uh, for Georgia. So, you know, you mentioned Coach Trey Scott and Dan Lanning. They're, they're obviously your primary recruiters or were your primary recruiters. What was that relationship like? Uh, and I, I know you grew close with Trey Scott first and then Dan Lanning came on and finally uh, Kirby Smart towards the end. Uh, actually, it was Dan Lanning that I had that really put me out there. Uh, he showed um, Trey Scott my um my film and he was like, you mm -hmm. got to watch this guy and um, because he's a dog and I want you to watch him and get him down here. So when he showed my film, they invited me to um like this little uh visit thing. And mm -hmm. so when I went, they showed me around and stuff and they was like, we got a surprise for you at the end. And then they had, I already told my parents while we was there, but I never did know. Like you could tell they was just dropping little hints and stuff off. But mm -hmm. um, as the day went on and we just sitting there, he was like, um, come over here and talk to me. And so I was standing over there talking to him. He was like, I'm going to give you a um, scholarship to um, UGA. And I was just like, I was just excited. So I was like, I got to tell my parents. And stuff. They're like, they already know Big Dog. He already <laughs> and I was like, no. So. I mean, it was probably a, a dream come true. Obviously, a Georgia boy uh, up there from the northeast side of, sure. you know, of Georgia. So, you know, going to Georgia obviously meant a lot to you. Um, and especially getting that offer. And uh, so, you know, now that you're a dog, right, you're you're part of, you know, one of six now in that 2021 class. Are there any, you know, players or any recruits that, you know, you might want to bring in with you or that you're heavily recruiting yourself? Oh, um, I can't really speak on that too much, but I got okay. one guy that I want to, uh, it's uh, Barrett Carter, um, okay. the, the number one linebacker. Yeah, so, from North Gwinnett. Yeah, so, um, I mean, so we've just been trying to get him in and, me and um, me and David, we just been trying to look around and get other people to come, and we got a few guys that's gonna surprise y'all to come to um, UGA. We can't really speak on it real right now. Yeah, mum's the word. Uh, you know, Michael Morris told us the same thing. He said, "Got y'all got big plans." Apparently, all six oh, yeah. of you guys are in a uh, group text together. So, big yeah, we plans. Got a group going. Yeah, that's always good, man. You know, better better to think together. Uh, then, you know, go out and, and, and try to do it on your own. So speaking of, you know, big plans, what are your goals for your senior year out there at Elbert County? Um, my big goal right now is, you know, every high school player wants to get that championship ring. So that's one of my big goals. And really right now, um, since um, I um, committed to Georgia, I just want to share everybody like what Georgia's got coming to um got coming to Athens, um, ready to play on the field. So really just show everybody what I got. 
and why Georgia picked me and stuff like and stuff like that. Well, we're gonna get to take a look at why Georgia picked you just here in a second, man. I'm gonna pull up the tape and, and we're gonna get into our, our our latest series of grind the tape right here with 2021 commit Marlon Dean. So now, Marlon, I was talking to you, and, and apparently, I'm not the only one that's you know told you this, but. Your sophomore film, the player we saw, the number 56 from Elbert County we saw in 2018, looks like a totally different player in 2019. I mean, your body composition, your body type is totally different. It looks like you either slimmed up or tightened things up one or the other, uh, and you just look like a completely different athlete. So before we start, man, what went into that body transformation uh, between your sophomore and junior year? Oh, uh, I got to give a shout out to um, Coach Rob, and I got to give a uh, shout out to um, – Coach Wagner, them the main, them the um big two that really like helped me transform transform my body into like like staying like make sure you have the adrenaline to keep going and not giving up on any plays out down the field. And with Coach Wagner coming in, being a new coach, he get, he conditioned a, a lot. Uh, like, I mean, a lot. Like we ran mm -hmm. every day, twenty four seven. And Coach Rob, he really showed us in the weight room how to trans, like how to be big and also still have footwork and speed out there on the field. So, yeah, them two are the main ones that really transform my body into how it is right now. All right, well, let's bust right into the tape right here. So here he is right here on the edge right here. So just take a look, man. And, and the first thing I notice about you, uh, Marlon, is that first step. For for a guy your size, right, you're 6'5", what do you weigh, like 270, 275 pounds? Yeah, 270. Yeah, right so a, a guy your size should not typically – have this type of initial burst. And, and, and it wasn't really there your sophomore year, but now it is here. I, one thing I see from you all the time, and this guy's getting a good dose of it too, man, you're resetting the line of scrimmage. These guys are getting hit in their chest with your helmet in your hands before they can even get two steps in the ground. So, you know, that burst right there, is that something you guys work on? I'm sure it is. Yeah, they taught me how to use my long, my long arms to get out there fast and have a – good burst off the ball and so we practiced that a lot and I really just came adapt to it and transfer it out there on the field. All right so this was one of my favorite clips and again this guy this guy's getting you know his his lunch eight right here and he's he's shocked. I mean look he can't even get his two feet in the ground before I mean you're initiating contact right here no matter what. All right so one thing I want the audience to watch is watch this guy's reaction once he gets up off the off the ground. And Marlon, Marlon, I don't know if you've seen this, but obviously you make the tackle. But watch this guy right here. Watch his reaction. Dang it. Shoot. <laughs> yeah, man, you're out there, you know, yeah. tearing guys up. Um, you know, what What, what goes into when, when you have, make a play like this? Obviously, this is just you physically dominating. You threw this guy like a rag doll. Yeah, so it's all uh, like with – like we worked on this drill. Like it's it's more like of a punch and pull. It's like basically like one of the moves that defense in – usually um do but, like at that moment I really couldn't like pull him and so like he was already leaning towards that way to try to cut me off not to get on the outside so really I just you know use my body weight and put him on the ground and make the play and you're playing with great pad level too right I mean it's it's something that I noticed from you and just your stance man your stance tells me you're an ultra athlete for a guy your size now I don't know what you know what role they want you to play at Georgia and maybe you can give us a little insight like uh, on that but to me, Marlon, when I look at your tape and, and knowing what Georgia does and, and looking at your frame, I don't see any reason why, and I don't know if you have aspirations to do this, but I don't see any reason why you can't add 20, 25 pounds and, and maybe creep in there and play inside. Do you have any indication on what they might want you to play at Georgia? Um, Coach Scott, Coach Scott talked to me a little bit about it, um, playing a little bit on um, inside, and I really thinking about um, trying to, like, add the right type of weight on to um, yeah. get my weight up and really play at that position. But I'm ready to play whatever position you really want me to play, even if it's at QB, I'll be back. <laughs> You'll give it a good. shot, right? No, one thing I see right here on this clip, man, you got good active hands, right? I mean, he, he, he doesn't win the rep. He's not winning the rep right here. But what allows you to win the rep is that second hand strike. There's a rip and a pull right here, and then, boom, we're disengaged already. Big yes, Marlins sir. up here right here, so – you know, what? How, how do you keep from just, you know, like a guy like you, big and strong, how do you keep from just bull rushing all the time, just sticking your head down and, and resetting the line of scrimmage? And, and and do you work on, you know, getting active hands and whatnot, disengaging, if you will? Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, we have, like, it's it's these drills that he always taught, Coach um, Coach Wagner always taught me that if you 
get them most of the time like since i'm big and tall and i'm always going to against like little short guys so they'll mainly try to hold you in inside keep mm -hmm. their hands inside and hold so i usually just try to keep my distance between them with my arms and either use my like i got different moves in my bag that i use every now and then but yeah mainly not try to use bull rush because that's always my initial go-to move if i'm going off the line with somebody if I see how they moving around and if they got good footwork and stuff like that, I have to switch it up a little bit. Absolutely. I don't, I don't see very many people uh, that get their feet in the ground prior to you. I mean, even this guy, I mean, good Lord. I, mean, I know the clip cut out, but even this guy, he's trying to catch you, right? He's He has not read the scouting eval. I'm going to tell you that right now. I don't know how early in the season this was, but this guy had watched much tape of Marlon Dean playing defensive end because he looks like he's trying to catch you instead of striking you first. And that is not a good recipe uh, for success. So let's go on to the next rep right here. And, you know, I like, I'm sure Georgia likes this about your tape, you know, that you're playing in an odd front defense, that you're playing in that heavy four eye or what they call a big five uh, yes, out sir. there at Georgia. So is that something they've talked to you about that they know that you're going to translate into their system because you look comfortable playing and, and plenty athletic playing that inside four eye technique? Oh, yeah. They show, they show me a couple of different, um, Positions, um, I mean, yeah, uh, places where they want, where they'll see me fit it, and mm -hmm. with me being comfortable right there, they were like, um, we can put you in right here for um to see how you adapt to it and stuff, and if you adapt to it very well, we'll keep you right there. Yeah, they call that a mint defense up at Georgia. Um, it's it's something that they've kind of changed, and it, honestly, it looks a lot like what you're doing right here at Elbert County. That's a good effort play. I don't know if you came up with this sack, but it's just you. This is just you running the edge right there and showing some showing some good bursts. And again, I, I go back to it, Marlon. It did not look like that as a sophomore, but as, oh, a, ju yeah. as a junior man, uh, I mean, this is lights out. And I think that might be a slight indication of, you know, because Georgia fans, I'm going to be honest with you, Marlon, from, from covering them, they've honestly gotten a little spoiled. So when they see a commitment from whatever a recruiting service calls a three-star recruit, they're like, who is this kid and why is he a three-star? Well, I mean, when you turn on this tape, this is not a three-star defensive end. It's not a three-star defense alignment. He may have been in the past, but this is a guy who's worthy of, of you know, a University of Georgia offer. So, yes, you know, I, I don't know what your thoughts are on, see, on all see, that. That's another thing. Like, people always um, people always address me on, on my sophomore film. It's like, um, like they try, to, they try to put me as my sophomore, my, like, the sophomore Marlin. But really, yeah. I – really transfer myself into being what I am right now that you see on film. Yeah, and I think I think there's even more room to grow. It's, it goes back to that yeah. conversation we were just having. I yes, mean, sir. dude, you're 6'5". You're, you're going to hold a lot – not a lot more weight, but you're going to hold a lot of good weight once you get up to up there to the University of Georgia. They're going to pack it on you. Uh, yes, and this, is a, this is a good job of, of disengaging. But the, the, the disengage is great, right? You're splitting a double team right here. But I want the audience to see the first two steps once you get past the line of scrimmage. Watch how quickly you close the space between you and the ball carrier. This is some burst right here, Marlon. This is something you don't see from a guy really your size very often. Yes, sir. So that's good stuff. You like to get skinny? I, I, oh, I mean, yeah. That's, that's what I called it. Is that what you're doing right here? Yes, sir. Try right, to split so, double team. Yeah, exactly. So for the for the audience who doesn't know, there's a couple of ways uh, to, to attack a double team as a defense alignment. You can either get skinny, right, split your shoulders, get in between the two blockers, or some defenses back in the day, especially prior to, you know, the big overhaul of spread offenses, they would do what's called two-gapping, where instead of trying to split that double team, you're going to occupy those two guys so your linebackers can get free. Where, as right here, you know, you might have to do a lot of that in college. I mean, just because – you know, they're not gonna they're not gonna let you just let oh, yeah. guys run free um up into their linebackers. But right here, you're doing a good job of you know shocking that first guy prior to getting skinny and splitting the double team. So, you know, but the main takeaway from that is you're six five, two hundred and seventy pounds. And it looks like if we were to put you on a 40 yard dash, it looks like you would run somewhere in the that 10 yard split, that first 10 yard sprint. I bet you would go like one seven eight, one seven nine. Uh, right now, I think you know you're quicker than fast. If you look at this tape, would you agree, Marlon? Yes, sir. All right, let's take a look at this next clip. Shrinking space, man. This is good, right? I mean, here, here's the thing for the audience. Sometimes, you know, I, I don't know who this quarterback is. I don't know if he's mobile, but I'm sure you're taught 
that if you're the backside in, you've got quarterback boot reverse, correct? Yes, sir. All right, so for the audience, what we call shrinking space is boom. See, Marlon's shoulders are square right here. He could turn down the line of scrimmage and, and, and you know make this play even faster, but he's coached up to shrink the space, keep his outside arm free, and keep his outside shoulder free just in case that quarterback pulls that football. And he did give you a hard fake, right? He stepped into you, you know, pretty hard. But you know, what what goes into that? What are you watching right there? Because I've only been on an office, I've only been on the offensive line side. What are you where are you reading the keys? Are you just staring at the mesh point? See, that's the thing. Um, the quarterback, um, the first two plays, he got me, he got me with that play. They were in the play back to back because it worked on us. So he got me two times with that same play. And so like after that, I just been like, you could tell like I could read his foot, like his feet, like if he stands. Like if he's like 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 right there, if he stands really close to the running back, they're gonna hand it off because the running back is gonna um try to find that first hole. So yeah. I thought of, so I thought about I said if I stay tight on the um if I stay tight on the um tackle, I know if um uh, he's if the running back is gonna keep it or not. And right then I already knew that the um, running back is gonna keep it, so I went straight in. Yep, you turn your shoulders after a good couple of you know kick slides. Once the once the ball is gone. And you know for a fact, 100%, right now, you know that's running backs football. Boom, shoulders turn, get down the line of scrimmage and go, you know, meet with physicality, get there with aggression and come with a thump. So that's a good clip right there. Same thing kind of here. Look, I see what you're talking about, man. You're being coachable. Look, these first 10 clips, these first five, seven clips, however many we watch, those first two steps are bam, bam, like, right? You're getting into guys' chest. They're trying not to block you. Look. It, it, you 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 probably noticed by now in your high school career that sure. a lot of teams they're not going to try to block you. They're going to say, "All right, we'll read him all night long. Screw it. We're we're not going to try to go over there and base block that joker. We're not we're we're not going to try to run away from him. We're going to make him you know play a little slower than he typically does." But this is a good job by you of being a young coachable football player. Look, we're seeing guard and tackle pull away, right? You're thinking counter right now, but you've also got quarterback out the back, correct? Yes, sir. So, you know, that's good to see. You shed another couple blocks, and then you go in there and hold up the entire pile. Uh, no offense, Marlon. I, I know you're great as an offensive lineman, but we're going to skip through these offensive line clips because okay? <laughs> you ain't going to play it in college, even though, you know, you probably could. Maybe not maybe not at Georgia, but you could play offensive line at, uh, you know, a Vanderbilt or, or, or an NC State or something like that for damn sure just because of your physicality. I like that you finish plays too, right? But that goes back. To, to what we were talking about earlier, your coach getting good, nice conditioning levels. You know what? We will watch this clip because I just love it. You out here throwing guys out the club. Now, how are you playing all the snaps both ways out there at Elbert? Yes, sir. And um, they got me on, on field goal, too. Oh, man, that's a rep off. We, we ain't got to tell people that. I mean, you know, the we know. I play offensive line. We know that's a rep off. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Unless there's unless there's that one guy out there like Chad Lindbergh who's just trying to you know be a, a a mean bastard like he always is. That dude plays rough just like this. Good lord, man! You knew right at point of engagement that you had right here. You know you got this kid on skates, don't you? Yeah, uh, because he he tried to turn his hips and he put his arm up in there. So I was like, well, I need a highlight play right here. So I just went ahead. <laughs> Get me, man. Man, I talked to enough of you high-profile prospects. I never had that moment in high school. I was never, you know, Donovan Edwards said the same thing. He was out there on a on a block, and he saw the kid break down. He's like, "Ooh, I'm about to make a highlight." I oh, was yeah. never, I was never that good to be in game, see something happen, and say, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm about to put this one on the tape. It's about to be on the B roll." Now nah, I wasn't that good. It it was always just a a, a habit stance type of thing. Uh, that's why I played D two. All right, here we go. Uh, <laughs> you know, I one thing I was listening to a, a Kirby Smart uh, coaching clinic. Him and uh, Coach Schumann were out at a coaching clinic, you know, last year or so. And one thing he talks about is the fact that defense alignment are no longer even interior defense alignment. The the Terrence Cody's of the world, the six foot five, three hundred and thirty pound joker in there in the middle, the clock stopper. That just doesn't happen anymore. Teams are playing too much in space. They're forcing defenses to run. So a guy like you, a tall, lanky, athletic football player, is going to translate really well at the college level, Marlon. Yes, sir. Especially in what you know, and what Smart and 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 Landing and those guys are trying to do. 